Hi, I'm Alice Cabell Williams. I am your local agitator. I'm from Lawrence, Kansas, and currently I work in public health and study at KU. Um, I made a post about hand washing earlier this year during the beginning of the Rona, and that sparked a conversation with the Emily Taylor Center about skill sharing. I'm really excited to share this skill with other people, and I hope that people will really learn a lot um, from this video. If you have any questions, um, put them in the comments. Um, you can message my page, you can message Emily Taylor page or the event page, I'm sure. Um, but if you have any questions, um, I would love to answer those. And if you have any tips, or if you see the way that I'm doing something, that there's another way to do it, or there's a better way to do it, definitely let us know because I'm always looking to get better. Um, I have a list of uh, notes here just to make sure that I cover everything. Um, I learned to hand wash clothes when I was younger. We had a clothes line in my grandpa's backyard and he also had indoor clothing lines that he had set up in his basement. Um, so I kind of grew up around uh, not so much the hand washing part, but at least the, um, the line drying and the flat drying parts. That was something that um, my household engaged in pretty much um, consistently because it was an energy saver. Um, but that leads me into the long list of benefits of hand washing. Um, there's lots of benefits and reasons to hand wash. Um, for me personally, um, when the pandemic had started, I was still living in an, in an apartment that did not have a washer and dryer. And so for me, it was a necessity to be able to wash my clothes. Um, I think that there was a period of time where we didn't know exactly how the virus was being transmitted and I wasn't really comfortable with going to public laundry mats any, anymore at that time. And so there are times where based on where you're at or the, if there's a pandemic or not, um, you might need to have to um, hand wash your clothes. Another reason to hand wash your clothes is you may not have enough for a full load. It is the most efficient thing to do to wait till you have a full load of clothes to use a washing machine. Um, but sometimes if you don't have a full load and there's just a particular shirt that you want to wash so that it can be ready today or ready tomorrow, hand washing is a really good option. Um, if you have a stain that requires immediate removal, it is best to hand wash as soon as possible depending on the stain. Um, also, for folks that have pre-existing conditions and don't want to go out as much during this time, kind of related to my pre to my earlier reason, um, hand washing can be a great um, thing to do if you're trying to avoid extra trips. Um, if, again, if you don't have a washer or dryer, it's great. Um, I found that with hand washing, you can use a variety of products. With a laundry uh, washing machine, you do have a limited range of soaps that you're supposed to use, and depending on the machines, sometimes there are specific soaps that you have to use with that machine. Um, what comes to mind for me is the high efficiency machines. Those have a very particular line of soaps that you have to use with those machines. Uh, with hand washing, you are free to use hand soap, bar soap, um, liquid soap, powder soap. Um, I've used dish soap um, and you know it all washes your clothes. There's, there's less restrictions when you're hand washing it. Um, I also found that it was gentle on handmade items, and especially right now where we have all these handmade um, face masks and stuff, I've found that hand washing has been a better way to kind of preserve the structure of those because um, they'll have the little metal pieces, they'll have the elastic straps, and I did put one through my washing machine, so I moved and I have a washing machine now. Um, I did put one through my washing machine and it kind of tore it up. So um, it is gentle on handmade items. It's a gentle way to clean um, homemade pads as well and other items like that. Um, just a preview of a, of a later, um, what is it? I think it's Johnny LaCour is going to be teaching how to make um, menstrual pads, I think, later in the series. I think it's the last um, workshop of the series too. So that'll be really fun. You can definitely apply these skills to those pads. Um, the list continues. There are so many benefits. Um, there are some items um, that will actually just ask you to hand wash them. They require hand washing, so therefore hand washing is a nice thing to know. And at least, um, and some clothes may not say that, that you have to hand wash them, but they'll require you to line dry or flat dry them. And so I'll be showing you today how to hand wash and how to line dry. Um, hand washing also keeps your clothes looking new and fresh for longer. Um, it helps you preserve your purchases for more wears um, if you um, follow the laundering recommendations. So if it says to hand wash, it's probably a good idea to hand wash it. And if it says to line or flat dry it, it's actually worth it to do so. Um, I also found that um, if you're using hand washing uh, more frequently or semi-frequently, that means you don't have to have as many clothes because you don't have to have enough clothes to last you for a week or several weeks. Um, when I lived in an apartment, I needed enough black shirts and enough certain kinds of clothing to last me for several outfits. Um, but if you're hand washing um, frequently anyway, um, you don't have to have as many clothes. And so that, that um, contributes to sustainability. 
Machines are also expensive to purchase and inconvenient to move or impossible to move if you're not strong enough or you're in an area where you don't know anybody or you can't afford to, um, to compensate movers. Machines also use a lot of water and electricity. Um, they actually use two to three times the amount of water that hand washing does. Um, I also personally like um, hand washing. It's a, it's a wonderful um, activity to do with children. You can give them, like you can help them wash their little socks and it helps get them involved in chores. Um, so this is something that I've enjoyed with at least one child in my family. Um, I also personally, um, depending on the item, I actually like flat drying it, like if it's one of my head wraps or something like that, because it gives it like a stiff texture, um, similar to if you were gonna if you were going to starch your clothes. And so I have a personal preference with at least a few of my head scarves or head um, head wraps um, that I like to hand dry um, that way. Um, I also like it because when you're hand washing and line drying, there's no static, and so if you're kind of creeped out by static electricity or it bothers you or it um, provides a sensory issue for you, hand washing can be a great way to get rid of that. We're still, we're almost done with the list. Um, I also like hand washing because it's stress reducing and calming. There's something about squishing the clothes and squeezing and like, you know, it's, it's kind of, it lets you get out some physical energy in your hands and it's really great. Um, for hand exercises, I'm a musician and an artist, and so I actually like hand washing because it's like it's kind of a hand exercise. Um, and then the last thing on my list to think about is it's also empowering. Um, I find it's a lot like a survival skill, and I think it's empowering to be able to wash your own clothes and not have to rely on a machine. Kind of like being able to can your own um, fruits and jellies and things like that. It's like an extra thing that, that you know that makes you feel more secure um, if you suffer with anxiety or if you just like learning new skills. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, like I said on my event page, you do need a sink, a bathtub, or a bucket. If you get a bucket, it's good to have one that's at least five gallons um, in terms of how much it'll hold, but that's if you're trying to do several pieces of clothing. Just your regular kitchen sink will work. Um, you do need some gloves, if possible. The higher up the glove, the better, because you're gonna have your arms in the water a little bit, and especially if you're bending down to get into like a deep bucket, you're gonna want the taller gloves. Um, nothing really particular beside, um, else with the gloves. Um, you also need a drain stopper. And there's a couple of different kinds of these. I have a plastic one and a metal one that's in this pre-treatment sink that I got ready. Um, this helps you keep the water in your sink because you're going to need your clothes to be in there long enough to soak um, and also to rinse out. Um, if you don't have a basin and you're like just washing your clothes like in a public sink or something like that, um, you don't have to go this route. You, you can just kind of rinse it out with some soap. It's not recommended. Um, you don't want to continually wash the same item that way if you can help it. Um, so you don't have to do it this way, but I'm just kind of, kind of showing you one way to do it that involves some type of basin of water. So I'm going to go ahead and put that, um, that stopper in there. We also have laundry detergent. Um, like I said, hand washing allows you to use a variety of soaps, and so you can use laundry detergent. You can also use dish soap, hand soap, a bar of soap if you want to rub it directly onto the clothes that way. Um, you don't have to um, follow as many restrictions because you're just hand washing. And I would say, though, that as you're using the soap, definitely, definitely don't put as much as you would put in a washer. And um, remember, when you fill up the washer, it's a whole load of clothes. And if you're filling up the sink with just like three shirts or some of your socks and panties, like you can't put a whole, a whole um, cap full of soap in there. It will not rinse out or it, it will be very difficult to rinse out and you'll end up with really stiff clothes because there's soap residue. So don't do that. It's also a waste of your soap. Um, so just put a little bit in, I would say about an ounce, which for reference, eight ounces is a cup. I would put about an ounce into your sink, and I'm kind of a, a cook and, I, and I've done this a lot, so I kind of know how much an ounce is, but if you need to measure it with a measuring cup, totally fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my gloves on. And as far as the temperature of the water, um, it kind of doesn't matter. I will say though that if you're washing um, face masks because of the COVID um, that could be in the masks, um, the recommendations is to, is to wash it in hot water if you can. Um, but I would just say the warmest water that you can stand to handle. Um, the great thing is that you could just put hot water in here and then like not touch it and then over the course of it soaking, maybe it cools off. So there's, there's definitely ways to use hot water in hand washing without burning yourself. Um, but for most clothes, you can just use cold 
um, lukewarm water, warm water, like all of those are fine and they use less energy. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up the sink about halfway. Um, whatever receptacle that you're using, don't fill it up more than halfway because you need room to be able to swish the clothes around. So I've got my soap in there. I'm going to go ahead and get my clothing from Caravadita's shorts. And they're made out of, out of polyester. So I have it about a third of the way full. For me, that's fine for just one item of clothing. If you're going to have like several items of clothing, you obviously want the water to be about half full of clothes and half just the water, um, if that helps you as a reference. Um, I did go ahead and pre-treat um, a shirt. This is a rayon shirt, and it's been soaking for about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Um, I like to let my clothes soak for almost as long as possible, not too long, maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, because the longer it's soaking in there with the soap, um, the more clean it is. If you have severely soiled clothes, like there's dirt and like you were cooking and there's like food stains and stuff on them, um, you will want to soak them for longer than something, that, than something that's a quicker wash or a more delicate item. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next step with this one. So it's been soaking for about 15 minutes. Um, you know, none of us are doing too much because it's the pandemic, so this shirt was not very dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and drain out the soapy water. And I'm just kind of like looking at it, make sure that if there was a part that I wanted to clean, that it is clean. What I'm going to do is just run it under running water. Okay, I'm going to put the plug back in and I'm going to run clean water in there. So you let it soak and then you rinse it out, and then you let it soak in clean water because it pulls the soap out. It's an important process. Because if you don't get all the soap out, your skin's gonna be irritated, and your item's going to dry really hard. It's not good. I'm gonna let that soak in just the clean, plain water. You don't have to rinse out the basin, so I've seen some people where like they'll rinse out the basin because technically there was soapy water in there before but the, the, the amount is going to be negligible as long as you're not overusing the soap. So I don't do that. Um, but if you were into that, um, and it's totally fine if you are, you can use like the spray thing. You can use a cup of water to kind of go around the edges of your bucket or your basin um, to make sure that all the soap is out if that's a, an issue for you. And also the other thing that you can do is um, if you did have a stain on the, on the clothing, you could pre-treat it the same as you would pre-treat clothing for the washing machine. So like using bleach or OxyClean or anything like that. Just making sure that if you're using abrasive cleansers that you're using the, um, the gloves because it's okay to wash like an item or two with no gloves on. I've been fine. Um, but I have noticed if I wash clothes for like you know, several loads of a few items that my skin does start to get kind of sensitive and it's easy to, um, to get little paper cuts and things in my skin afterwards, I guess, kind of calluses it. Um, so like I said, that was pre-treated. There's clean water in, in that black shirt now. These are the shorts that I just put into the soapy water. You can literally rub the shorts on themselves. Um, this is called agitating. So um, that's how clothes technically get clean whenever you wash them, whether you're hand washing them or whether you're um, machine washing them. So you can kind of rub them together. You can rub them together in the water, outside of the water, whatever works for you. You can also kind of squeeze it and move it around in the water. Um, similarly to whatever you, you could imagine or could see happens inside of the washing machine. But the main thing for me, I don't like to work really hard on, on a lot of things with, on, my, on my clothes. And I'll actually just let it sit in there and soak because osmosis and, and the water and the soap is going to do the magic for you. But again, if you have like, if you're severely dirty clothes or you're washing children's clothes, and sometimes children's clothes can be a little more soiled, um, you will want to make sure that you're agitating it and moving it around. Otherwise, it's not really getting clean. So just a little tip. Um, 
and I think we'll move on to the, so when you've rinsed out the soapy water and you have the clean water to kind of rinse out your item, you don't have to let it sit in the clean water for as long as you let it sit in the soapy water. Um, you can let it sit in the soapy water for 15 minutes like I let this shirt sit and then maybe just let it sit in the clean water for a few minutes to kind of pull out the soap. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off and drain the water and you run it underneath the faucet. I like to push it up against the side to kind of get some water out. I found that it's easier than trying to sit here and squeeze it with just your arms. If you push it up against the side, you can use your body as leverage to get that water out. And make sure that when you're rinsing your item that you do move it around because if you leave it bunched up in a ball, you can leave space where soap is trapped. Um, so just make sure that you're moving it around and really rinsing it off. So I'm going to say that that one's good. Oh, there's some water. Put more water on this side. So, this is the shirt. It's a complicated shirt. Women's clothes can be so complicated. There we go. It's kind of cute. It like ties in the back behind my neck. It's like a linen kind of like chemise kind of shirt. Um, so, it's a little bit lighter. You probably can't see it in the mirror, but it's somewhat see-through. You can kind of see through the material a little bit. And, sorry, my drain's like super loud. Um, or something like this, I would actually drape it across the top of a laundry basket. Um, so I don't, it, it continued making noise. You can drape it across the top of a laundry basket. You can put it on the, now the police are driving by. You can put it on the lid of a Tupperware. Um, I have one over here. If you have like a big Tupperware lid, you can let clothes dry on top of that. I actually use little um, cabinet dividers that you can buy from like Walmart. I also use these to hold up my synthesizers and stuff. These are so multifunctional. Um, but I could drape it over something like this. Making sure that you're trying to keep it flat, but you could like put it over something like that and let it dry. Make sure that wherever you're letting something dry, that wherever the drips are going to fall, that there's a towel, that there's a hard surface. Um, I like using my bathtub for this reason. I can literally set this whole thing in my bathtub and the water, of course, is just gonna go to its drain. You can also put it back in the sink like this. You can set it outside on your porch or your front stoop. Um, it's actually wonderful setting clothes outside because the sun will actually dry the item faster and also helps to get rid of germs and, and bacteria that are in your clothing from um, your body or from COVID. So lots of reasons that, you know, using the sun can help you. Um, if you have a fan, um, one of those like floor um, oscillating fans, I've, I've loved using those. Like I'll have like all my clothes there and it'll just like be fanning my clothes. I will say that if you're going to be washing and drying a lot of clothes, it can, it can encourage mold if you're not using a dehumidifier, if you're not opening your windows or using your like fans that you have built into your bathroom or your kitchen. Um, if you uh, open up the door or the windows, that can be helpful. Um, so I will say like if it's just one or two items, like you don't have to worry about it creating so much um, humidity in your room that you have to worry about it. Um, but if you're going to wash like a whole load worth of clothes or several loads or really big items like your comforter, um, I would definitely think about how you can kind of dehumidify your house a little bit as you're doing that. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put some clean water, clean water on these shorts. Let's see. Oh, i got to use this one. And if you run the, um, the water over the shorts, it'll kind of pull out more of that soap. So I'm gonna let them soak in this clean water for a few minutes. 
you can let them soak longer. You know, if you do have a heavily soiled load and you put a lot of soap in there, and you, you probably need to um, soak it into clean water longer. Um, but there's lots of ways of drying the clothes. I do want to show you how I use the clothing pins. You can use dish racks. You can use like the wire kitchen, like metal storage racks. Um, you can use the um, the cabinet um, dividers like I was just showing you. But I like this because it's right over my sink. And so you can use that. Um, I think the last thing I didn't talk about was, oh yeah, so there's two other ways I didn't talk about. I figured out that I could use my shower rod. If I just like to roll my shower rod closer into the inside of the bathtub, I can actually hang really big items on it and then all of the drip goes into my bathtub. So that's a cool little tip that I figured out. Um, also, if you drape them over a laundry basket with most of the item inside of the laundry basket, the liquid will collect at the bottom, which is really convenient. Um, and then the last thing, um, I don't know that I'll be able to show it because I have the camera set up in one direction, but if you're washing something like a sweater, um, you can actually roll it up in a towel to dry it that way. Um, that's actually recommended for sweaters. So, and then I think the only other thing to tell you about this part before I get more into drying um, is that you can put some distilled white vinegar in the cleansing water or the rinsing water or whatever you want to call it. Um, it acts as a natural fabric softener. So I'm going to go ahead and take the shorts out because I know that I didn't use a lot of soap and I know that it's just one item. to kind of squeeze out the water. Awesome. So this is something that it's a little bit heavy because this one is made out of, what was it, polyester? Polyester holds onto water, is pretty water absorbent, whereas cotton materials, um, which I have a cotton um, shirt down here that I'll show you, it's, um, it dries a little bit faster, but it also can dry more wrinkly if you're not careful and if you don't lay it flat. So there's like pros and cons to every kind of fabric. Um, for something like this, I am just going to go ahead and stick it on the top shelf here. There we go. See how much water is in there? That, that's, that's polyester for you. Um, other materials are not quite as absorbent. So I definitely, I don't think I'll do the cotton shirt, but I do want to show people how to wash masks and socks because they're kind of like small materials and it's like how do you wash it on itself if it's this small of um, fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and do some of that as well. Let me go ahead and I'm not going to actually do a, um, a soap cycle because I know that these are already clean. I just kind of got them to show people in the video. So I'm not going to put soap in here this time. But if you're watching and following along, don't forget to do the soap cycle. And also because there's no soap, I'm not going to use my gloves with this. I know that it's not harsh. There we go. There are some items that it's actually fine to wash without soap. Um, there are also items that people sometimes don't realize that they're not supposed to wash as often, like jeans. Um, for face masks, obviously I would use soap. I would use the warmest water that you can. I would also try to dry it out in the sun if you can, because like we said earlier, it helps get rid of the germs. Um, but what I do with the mask is I literally just kind of squeeze it on, scrunch it on itself, kind of wash it and just kind of move it around in that kind of a motion, like the money kind of symbol. Um, I find that that gets them pretty clean and because they're often made of two pieces of fabric, it also helps those pieces of fabric to rub together when you're doing that motion, as opposed to something like this, like I was doing with the bigger objects. So, and then just being careful where the metal pieces for the nose, making sure that you're not weakening that, um, or causing any part of your mask to not be as effective and as comfortable as it could be. So with masks, they're actually easier to hang dry because they already come with these little loop, built-in loops. So you can literally just hang it on a hook, let it dry like that. Um, if you don't like that, you can also just lay it flat on something. Um, if you have like a bigger face mask, like I know that they have some that kind of go back farther on your face, um, uh, laying them flat to dry can be nice. Um, just making sure that you're moving the elastic so that it's kind of in the shape that you want it to dry in. It's a little tip. I noticed that sometimes the elastic dries in funny shapes. 
and then I'll show you these socks. Now socks are something that I pretty much always use clothing pins on. So I roll it back out after I've squeezed out the excess liquid. You can literally use a clothing pin and stick it here. And there's really no right or wrong way to do this. I mean, it's just your socks. I mean, nobody's going to be looking and see like a little indention in your socks because you were using a clothing pin on it. So I wouldn't really worry about it. Just making sure again that they're going to be able to dry over your sink or another bucket or basin. Something that I would say with socks is that sometimes they work, they dry nicer if you only clip one side of the loop of the top of the sock. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So like the top of your sock is like the circle. If you clip it, almost like a stocking, like a Christmas stocking would be on the wall, if you clip it so that this is open, that allows a little bit more air to get in there to dry your socks faster. That's come in handy when I like I needed a pair of dress socks to be dried really quickly. It's nice to do this, get some fan action. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, oh, if you're using your kitchen sink, if you're using your kitchen sink, um, make sure that if you have laundry soap in it, um, make sure that you rinse it out because you don't want to sit here and then wash your fruits in there and then have laundry soap residue and things like that on your clothes or um, on your fruit from washing your clothes. Um, also, if you're using, that's one reason why sometimes when I'm using um, my kitchen sink, I like to just go ahead and use dish soap for, dish soap for my laundry because I know that it's something that is generally safer than most laundry soaps. Laundry soaps can be pretty abrasive. They do happen to make um, soap that is specific to hand washing clothes, which is really awesome. Um, I have found that they can be a little bit overpriced and they're kind of hard to find, but they don't sell them um, all the time at the store, something that I've had to order in the past. Um, and I realized that it didn't really make too much of a difference based um, compared to other soap. Um, so it's totally up to you if that's something that you want to invest in because you're going to be significantly hand washing a big part of your closet. Um, then that's great, and they come in all the different varieties that other soaps come in. So, let's see, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Um, I think what we could do is go over, so I know that people had sent me some questions. I actually got three questions, which is like the perfect number. So the first question that somebody asked me was if I've ever used a washboard and if it's recommended for hand washing. Um, washboards were developed for hand washing. However, I have I have not personally been intrigued by the by the washboards because I know that they're technically they're typically used for heftier items like like pairs of jeans or um, towels and things like that. Um, a lot of the items that I'm hand washing tend to be like my delicate shirts, um, bras, and things like that, and I don't really need the washboard for that. Um, I also like to avoid extra tools whenever I can, so if I have something that I can just use my hands for, um, I'm less inspired to like go find a tool for it. Um, however, washboards have a very rich history and they definitely have an application with thicker pieces of clothing. Um, and so if that's something that's for you or that you want to explore, um, washboards can be really nice because you can decorate them. And then of course we all know um, the musical applications of washboards and stuff. Um, especially because of Barry Barnes, our local musician. So I'm not against washboards, I just don't usually use them myself. Um, the second question is, and I thought that this was a really good question, um, and it was, is the delicate cycle on a machine or hand washing technically better or more gentle? Um, I would say it depends on how bougie your washing machine is. I've seen some washing machines that, you know, because like it had the window and I could see inside, that the hand washing cycle was pretty legit. Um, uh, I would say it's about as good as hand washing, but if you don't have like as nice of a machine or you're using like a public laundromat machine, um, I would say that the gentle cycle or delicate cycle or hand wash cycle, if it has it, may not be as legitimate as actually hand washing your clothes. Um, something called micro tears um, happen on clothes, and they, they happen when you're hand washing them too, but they happen more frequently with machine washing. And it's just the little tears that happen in the fabric as you're agitating them, um, you know, to clean them. And so I would say that since there's so fewer um, micro tears in hand washing, that that might be a good indicator of the quality of that method. 
Um, I also feel like hand washing is better for items that have a shape that you want to keep. So like a bra might be better served by hand washing because you want to keep it in a certain shape, some bras. Um, I also vote for, um, for hand washing because sometimes those um, really, really pricey machines that have the hand washing cycle on them, it's like you're paying a lot for maybe just this one extra function or types of functions that maybe don't really increase your clothing value or longevity and that you could also just serve um, yourself through hand washing. Um, Oh yeah, I've also seen um, you know things called delicates bags. It's like a mesh bag that you can throw into your washer um, with your delicates in it, and that's been pretty effective. And I've seen really good results from those. Um, but yeah, it just kind of comes down to um, how busy you are, how many delicates you have, um, how much money are you investing in your clothing, um, how much clothing do you really want to be purchasing, how big is your closet. Like, there's so many factors that go into whether machine washing or hand washing or a combination of the two, which is what I do. Um, what you know, which method would be best for you? Um, the last question was um, some fabrics. Let's see. Oh, how to stop clothes from drying hard. So I think what they're talking about maybe is where you lay the clothing out and then it's like a hard piece. Um, like I said earlier in the video, if you are not rinsing the soap out properly, the clothing will dry hard. There are also just some fabrics that just, that just do that. Um, I can't like think of any off the top of my head. It kind of seems like it's particular fabric blends, but like linens and things like that. I mean, they're gonna dry with a stiffness to them anyway, whether you were to hand wash them or machine wash them. And so there's just gonna be some items like that. Um, but yeah, I think if you rinse out all of the soap, if you help it to dry quickly, um, I've also noticed that if I dry something in the sun, that some fabrics will dry more stiffly and some will dry more softly. And so I don't really know what the mechanics are behind that. Um, but yeah, these are extremely good questions. And um, I think, oh yeah, the other piece to that question that I wanted to talk about was um, they do sell collapsible and retractable clothes lines and like racks that you can have in your house. Um, there's this minimalist channel that I watch where they have like they have um, line on one wall of their kitchen and then like they like pull it out and pull it across their kitchen um, when they're using it. Um, I think stuff like that's awesome. Um, what I've done in the past was I just try to do my clothes washing at night so that they can hang up during the night while we're sleeping. And then when I wake up in the morning, I can just put the clothes away and get them out of my way really easy. So that's something that I do to kind of keep the clothes out of my way as they're drying because if you do this in the middle of the day, then your sink's kind of taken up or your dish rack or your bathtub or whatever it is that you're using. And so it is nice to be able to do this at night or use retractable or collapsible or basically temporary structures for drying. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, there's a joke. Um, what state has the most dirty laundry? Can you guess, Ross? No, I don't know what it is. Washington. <laughs> it's stupid. Um, and then one other joke. So, what did the first sock say to the second sock? In the, I don't in know. In the dryer. What did it say? I don't know. Let's see. I'll see you the next time around. It's cheesy. Bye.